Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can transform just a simple studio suit into an amazing manipulation or an amazing masterpiece using just your Photoshop. And the beautiful part of it is that it's not going to take you much time and much stress. You may think we're going to be doing a lot, but no, we're not going to be doing a lot. But the result is going to definitely, definitely shock you. Okay, so we start wasting much of your time. Let's quickly get started. This is the image we're going to be working with. And this is the background we are going to be working with. So what we want to do is that we want to take this background and transform the background of this image, blend it together, add screen effect, and see how much we can be able to do. All right, so the first thing I will definitely do is to check if my image is in my 4x5 format, which is, which it is. I would have to, you know, crop it. If you wish to crop, you can as well crop your own, but mine, I'm not going to be cropping. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to separate this image from the background. Remember, we are changing the background, not the image. So to change the background, you have to remove the image and cut the background out. So to do that, go to any of your selection tool right here and select something. So once the subject is perfectly selected, you should zoom in to look at the result you have here. So if, I, if you look over here, you will notice that my hair is also selected here. So I'm going to right click and go to select inverse and I'll try to remove you know, to restore the hairs as much as I can here. The ones you cannot restore here, don't worry, within the course of the video, I will show you how to bring them back without even losing any strand. Then I'll come over to this side and check what the selection looks like. So here is also two inch thin. Then downwards towards the leg, look at the footwear or the shoe. So I'm just going to use my uh last up to and just turn it out and this area to me touch the very little over signature we have here okay so make sure you go around your image to check the edges look at this space i would look at spin it go around to check the edges of your image very very important it's going to determine how clean or how much of less work we are going to be at the end of the day. Okay, so this is good. The next thing I'll do is to make a duplicate of my background. Right click and go to layer via cut. So if you look at my background now, you will notice that it's looking quite rough and we do not want that. So I'm going to hold my control and click on the background. Now we'll have our image on a separate background and our background on a separate layer rather. But we still need to clean up the background. So to clean it up, reload the selection on me. Go to your filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So I'm going to smoothen it out until I have a very smooth background. So I pick seven, we can actually work with that. Press OK. Deselect it. Make sure your object is above the whole layer, your background in the middle. Then go to the uh, background you want to use. Make sure it's unlocked. Pick up your move tool and just drag it over your object and place it right there. Now you need to scale it in to so fill the whole place. Nice one. Okay, so I think I need to bring this one in a bit too. All right, big work. Now the next thing to do is to start blending it in. Of course, you are not going to leave it like that. If you leave it like this, it's going to look so unprofessional and so bad. The next thing to do, the next thing to do is to start blending it in. So to blend it in, first of all, you need to change the blend mode of the background to multiply. So on a normal day, I would have said change it to overlay. But if you change it to overlay, it becomes very light and it, it loses all its contrast at there, which we do not want. We want it thick, heavy, three-dimensional and all of that. So do that, change it to multiply or even color bond. Does that color bond will make it very, very dark. So let's see it and multiply which one is better. So I think color bond retains the contrast even while making it that. But I'll multiply. I'll multiply makes it dark, but we are losing the contrast. So I'm going to work the 
linear bond rather, not color bond. Now that we have darkened it, we are still noticing that the warmness of the original background it still has an effect on the inlay. Deal with that in very, very simple. All you have to do is to introduce a gray background, which is a solid color in between the original background and the background we are working with. What do I need? Just stay on the original background and select solid color. Make sure you are selecting gray. Press OK. Then to blend mode to either overlay or color. Any of them will take care of it for you. So one thing you will notice right now is that our background became more contrasty and we lost all the warmness from the original background. Now, we still cannot leave it like this because it's still not looking very realistic. So the next thing to do is to brighten up the object or the overall images. The background is also bad. So I'll go to my false, I'll boom all the layer, and I'll just keep it up in it. Just like that. Beautiful. So you notice the moment I pushed it up, everywhere lights up, right? Everywhere lights up. But I still need a little contact. So I'll create one more contact up in layer, come all the way down here, and just drag up. That is in any case. And immediately we get some contrast on the image. Now, if I zoom in on my object, one thing you will notice is that the color of the object is likely not in sync with the color of the pattern. So, what do you do? Very, very simple, right? Go to your object, create a color balance uh, layer. Make sure you are clipping it on the object. Now, the image is generally warm. So, to fix that, I'll just add a little magenta, add a little cyan, you know, have a connecting color with the background, and of course, pull it down a little. Let's see how that handles. Beautiful. So you can as well try pushing towards the red and see if it looks better there. I think I prepare it around the red area. Oh, just like that. Look at the before, look at the after. Immediately, we are getting colors that are looking like what we want the next thing i want to do is to create a reflection but before i do that if you look here like i said initially i will show you how to restore your fan very simple come over to your solid color pick up your brush and paint some part of it out excuse me do the same thing with the original background like that and of course same thing with the one you brought in or even peel from your own uh, your own image as well. Just you know, bring back some areas that you have lost. So I'll put mask for them over here and reduce the brush flow because I don't want to have too much of my original background. So you know, and you just paint over there, and there it is. All right. So the next thing I want to do is to create a reflection, but I feel my background is still very much dark. But I'll just brighten it up a little. Just a little like that. Do report. Then maybe create an airy feel using my calls. So I'll just create one more pause and just, you know, push this up a little to give us that airy feeling so that everything comes into sync. I think the contrast was basically human. So the next thing I want to do is to create a reflection for her on the floor. Because if you look at this image, you notice that the Everything up is reflecting down. So our object also needs to reflect. Do that, press Ctrl J. Make sure we stay on the one below. Press Ctrl T. Right click and clip vertically. So we'll just clip it vertically. Drag it all the way down. Make sure the two legs form the same percent. I want them both touching each other. So I can actually just, you know, pose it in from here. This pattern goes. And then I think this have that. All right, press OK. So the next thing to do is to change the blend mode. Maybe it's soft light or overlay. Think soft light does the top. Press Enter. I will blow it out definitely. Go to filter, go to blow, go to custom blow. So I'll be keeping this all around. Press OK. Now, there's something I want to do with this background. I want to blow it out a little. The details are keep distracting that we are not able to focus on our object. So to do that, I will say on the background, go to filter, go to blow. Go to custom blur. Just blur it out a little. If you wish to just convert it to a plain color, you can as well do that. But I don't think I'd fancy the plain color. D 
this is also really really cool this is also really really cool but we'll still need to make sure we retain the galaxy we'll have in the film i think i'm going to leave it here so let's get a little bit of black beautiful this works for me right here and keeping it somewhere around well okay so the next thing i want to do is to create some global color grading you do that i'll go to my color lookup table and choose any color of my choice so i can you know start from it from down upward so it, it depends on exactly what you want to create but i want to create a very saturated high key image so let me work through that this is not bad the contrast is too much this is an entirely different color thing so let's just keep going this is beautiful good so i want this kind of saturated color but of course, this is too much. We are not going to be working with it. So what do we do? We we'll bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. So this is at the top. It is after, you know, that saturated color. Now, I am noticing that my dress, her shirt is supposed to be white, but it's no longer white. So I'm going to make a selection of her shirt, just like that. Go to my hue adjustment layer and just display the shirt a it give us that white shirt that we want to have in the image so the next thing i'll do is to create a sample layer take the image into my camera raw filter and you know play around with the lightning effect so press ctrl c or an e go to your filter go to camera raw filter so what do i want to do very simple create a big net effect to bring your whole attention to the middle and maybe you the shadow a little or something like this drag it to the midpoint but not the vignette effect will not be strong just something very light but you could you know see it directing your eyes to the center of the frame then comes it back to your basic if you add a little contrast lift your shadows a little bit more and brighten things up a little just something like this and we are good to go press ok so this is the before this would after the before the after so you can try to bring it down a little bit more and we are done let me show you the overall before and after of the whole image so this was when we started in photoshop this is the after this is the before this is the after tool don't picture your old photoshop practice the of course we are going to be giving out this background for free right we're going to be making the background available for you for free do your own thing on it apply it on your own video imaging and see the way it comes out you can even use this on a blue gown you can use this on a pink gown on a green gown because all the colors are properly represented in the puzzle thank you so much for watching this amazing video do make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification to get notified every single time we drop a new video until then see you on the next one